legacy of the games begin with the excitement of the mountain. It's time for the Whistler Cup 2010. Close to 400 athletes from every corner of the globe, Australia, Russia, Brazil, Canada, and 20 other countries, 24 in total, will compete for national pride and personal glory. It's the most important ski race in the world for athletes aged 11 to 14 years old. Super G, Giant Slalom, and Slalom races, over three days of competition to determine the top ski nation and the winner of the Whistler Cup. Will Canada defend its 2009 victory? The challenge will come from Japan, Italy, the United States, and the always powerful Austrians. Stay with us for the next 30 minutes and experience the pageantry, the camaraderie, and the alpine competition of the Whistler Cup. These world-class mountains recently hosted all of the Olympic Alpine events and now set the backdrop for the 18th annual Whistler Cup. 400 young athletes from across Canada and across the globe here to challenge the best and compete for national pride. This event has grown to become the largest and the most important ski race for 11 to 14 year old athletes and over the years has showcased some racers that are now the world's best. The event began back in 1993 and was modeled after the Trofeo Topolino Alpine Ski Races in Italy. It became an opportunity to learn from the best ski nations in the world and prepare our athletes for the national team and international competition. The Whistler Cup hosted young Canadian athletes such as Eric Gay, Britt Janik and Emily Bryden. All would take on the world and eventually go on to World Cup victories. But it hasn't been just Canadian athletes who grew up competing in the Whistler Cup. International superstars of alpine racing like Anya Parson, Tina Mays, Benjamin Reich and Lindsay Vaughn competed here in Whistler over the past 15 years. This place is awesome. The hill is just great. In 2008, it was the American team that won the Whistler Cup. But Canada came back last year to win the cup and bring pride to Whistler in the lead up to the Olympics. Congratulations, Team Canada! This year, the coaches from all 23 nations met to discuss the rules, start orders, and share stories. On the night before the first day of racing, the kids have an opportunity to share their national pride. Former Whistler Cup participants and Canadian Alpine team members Michael and Britt Janik, Manuel Osborne Parody and Eric Gay all competed hard here for Canada in February 2010. And they all credit the Whistler Cup as an event that prepared them for Olympic competition. And you'll see why. Coming up, the K2s tackle their technical events, the slalom and the giant slalom. First up for the K2s is the prestigious Super G, the fastest and most challenging race of this event. The first day of racing and the sun was shining on Whistler. Athletes descended upon the Whistler gondola as they focused on the challenges in front of them. Once at the top of the mountain, it was time for the mental preparation. Coaches go through last-minute advice and ensure that the skis are tuned and waxed. An opportunity to inspect the course and discuss the approach on each gate. Skiers attack the course as the weather and the excitement of day one provided the inspiration. Whistler Cup veteran and future superstar Michaela Schifrin from the USA flew down the course with a time of 108.37 and a third place finish to bring home the bronze. 
good. I wasn't sure what to expect because Super G isn't my best event, but it was still a lot of fun and I did my best and got a medal. <laughs> Austria's Julia Grosshaupt proved her need for speed as she attacked the course and finished with a time of 108.33, just 11 one hundredths of a second behind the first place finisher. Um, it was um, very cool. This day would belong to hometown hero Emma King, the 2010 Super G Speed Queen. Emma King would finish with a time of 1 minute and 8.22 seconds. A proud mom waiting at the bottom of the course for her and opportunity for her teammates to share in the glory. Um, I don't think it's sunk in yet, <laughs> to tell you the truth, but I think it'll feel good tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so you didn't expect to come first? What was the race like? No. I did not expect to come first at all. I just skied and I guess that was good enough. Go Dragon! Next it was time for the K2 boys to take on the Super G. <laughs> Collingwood, Ontario skier Carl Coos was ready for the challenge of the speed event and finished with a time of 108.04 and a third place finish for Canada. Let's hear it for Carl Coos! <laughs> It was good. Uh, Super G's one of my like second best disciplines, so I was pumped coming into it, and uh, I don't know, gave it all, gave my all. Italian skier Andrea Squasino, fresh from Topolino, proved how much he enjoys Whistler with a time of 107.73 to take home the silver. Andrea Squasino. <laughs> Slovenia's Miha Hrobat started his Whistler Cup experience with a bang as he took on the Super G course. Miha Hrobat would finish with a time of 106.94 and a gold medal for Slovenia. I'm first. How does that feel? Yeah, good. Really good. Did you expect to come first? What are your hopes for the Whistler Cup? Oh, I know. I didn't expect for Lily first, but a medal. Let's hear for these K2 women. A great start for Canada with a gold and bronze in the K2 division and many other top 15 finishes and points toward winning the Whistler Cup. Two more days of racing, two more days to prove their world-class skills. Let's hear for the men's K2 Super G winners. Later we'll have the results from the K2 Slalom and Giant Slalom races and get to know some of the Whistler Cup who's who. Well, there's more than 15 centuries. Exactly, so there's like... Whistler K2 racers Blake Ramsden and Emma King share their speed secrets. My coach just got me to relax and just to ski. No, no, no. Here, Team Canada coach Craig Glenday talks Olympic expectations. So guys, you got, just got to switch gears. It's not just about racing. The Whistler Cup's also about experiencing different cultures and meeting new people. Every year the Deeks family invites an international team to gather around their dinner table for a taste of Whistler. Ooh. Here we go. Wow, thanks. For you. When you go to someone else's country, the greatest privilege is to be invited into a home to share the culture of the country. After conducting business in 65 countries, Whistler resident Bill Deeks knows the value of a home-cooked meal. And that's why he and his wife Julie have opened up their home for the past eight years to a Whistler Cup ambassador dinner. We are having a dinner party for the Netherlands ski team who have come all the way from Holland. It's nice for them to um, be learn a little bit about the community in which they're skiing. This dinner is like, yeah. you learn so much with the uh, culture, you know. But I think it's good to relax and have a good time together and be as a team. <laughs> Serving up hospitality is only one way this racing family has supported the Whistler Cup. We've both been gate watchers, uh, we've been bib collectors, we've done almost every job there is. Of all those other things, this is the easiest. <laughs> Julie does the work. <laughs>
The Deke's warm welcome is part of what the Whistler Cup is all about, having fun and making friends. One of the most exciting events off the hill is coming up, the Parade of Nations. Uh, there's a very high chance I'll be racing some of these. Plus, find out how Olympic racer Michael Janik gives back to the Whistler Cup. Whistler truly came alive as the host mountain resort for the Olympic and Paralympic Games. There's no doubt that the atmosphere during the Games will be hard to recreate, although there's certainly a buzz in the village right now. Events like the Whistler Cup are truly an Olympic legacy. The energy and competitive spirit of the 2010 Olympic Games has been reignited by the Whistler Cup. As the next generation of Olympic hopefuls hit the slopes. Oh, it's amazing. You can watch them and you can just try to ski in their footsteps. I watched it on TV. I thought I would have been somewhere else, like not on the same runs practically. They're totally stoked to be uh, on the uh, Olympic uh, runs and the slalom course is the top of the uh, men's Olympic downhill. It's pretty cool. It's seeing that this is what they ski and we're skiing it too. It makes you feel like an Olympian. These young skiers know that 2010 Olympians competed on the same mountains as they are. And many of those skiers got their start at the Whistler Cup. I had the privilege of 30 days ago of being up on the Olympic track watching the champions of today. It was absolutely amazing. Many of them got their start in the Whistler Cup. And just a few hours ago I was up watching the kids ski today. And uh, they're going to be the champions of tomorrow. When other countries come, you can compare yourself to the world other than just your country so you can see if you're better than you thought you were or as good as you thought you were. Where Whistler Cup is extremely important for us is that it, it gives the athletes as they're moving up through the system an international benchmark but they start to realize that there's a bigger world out there and it's important that it starts early so that they know what they're aiming for. This is the 18th anniversary of the Whistler Cup with a record 23 nations competing. One of the highlights every year for the athletes, the locals, and the visitors is the Parade of Nations. It's a chance to put the fierce competition aside, at least for an afternoon, in honor of an international celebration. Just being by the athletes uh, all the rest of the world, you know. Beautiful and good. What a good experience. So much fun. It's so much fun. It's a really great experience. It's pretty exciting. I mean, you get really excited and you feel like you did well this year, so it's kind of like a reward even if you do if you don't do so well here. It's awesome. It's like huge. It's way bigger than any Australia race I've ever been to. corner of the globe from Hong Kong to the U.S. Virgin Islands to the host country of the next Olympic Winter Games, Russia. Which nation will win the 18th annual Whistler Cup? That answer is coming up. Whether winning medals or honing skills, the success of an event like this depends on the amazing athletes. Not just the youth on the hills, but the experienced athletes who give back every year to the sport that they love. This is Michael Janik's signature. Very excited. Michael Janik is a familiar face at the Whistler Cup. Back in the day, I remember Whistler Cup was, was such a great moment. The Olympian and former Whistler Cup skier is always happy to help out, presenting awards and talking to kids who want to be just like him. They come up and say, you know, nice to meet you and ask for a signature and stuff like that. So I think it's a great way to give back to the sport. It's just really cool having him in the Olympics and knowing that he was grown up in Whistler. You know, he's always great coming out every year for, uh, to help out with the Whistler Cup.